All right. Continuing on with uh, chapter one here, about halfway through. Um, continuing with more slope. So, finding the slope, remember, we are y's over x's. So, it doesn't matter which one you start with, but whichever one you do, start with that x as well. So, I'm going to start with the 4. So, 4 minus the other y of a negative 1 over negative 2 minus negative 3. Well, minus and negative cancels. So 5 and 1, or 4 and 1 make 5. Negative 2, positive 3 would be 1. So in other words, we have a slope of 5. So that would equal n. Now, continuing on. If we have the same slope, then we say that the lines are parallel. So to write an equation of a line that is parallel, we would use the same slope. So here, it's always what's in front. So m would equal 2. What's in front of the x is your slope. So we're on the same slope. So y minus y over point 1 equals our slope 2 parentheses x minus x over point, which would be plus 3 in this case. Now, if all it says is just write an equation, that's it. But we're going to convert it over into slope-intercept form. So we're going to distribute the 2 in. And so y minus 1 would equal 2x plus 6. Add the 1. So y would equal 2x plus 7 would be our equation as well. Now, if they have the opposite slope, then they're going to be perpendicular. So another way to look at it is the product of the two slopes, both it and its perpendicular slope, would equal negative 1. And a horizontal line will always be perpendicular to a vertical line, which kind of makes sense. So write an equation of a line that passes through the point 3, negative 5, and it's perpendicular to a line with the equation y equals negative 1 fourth x plus 2. So m in this case would equal negative 1 fourth. So we're going to flip it and change the sign. So the slope we need would be negative will become positive and one fourth will become four. And that's what we're going to use. So y minus y of our point would be plus five equals four parentheses x minus x of our point, which is three. So distribute your four in. Y plus 5 would equal 4X minus 12. And then we'd subtract 5. So Y would equal 4X minus 17 would be our answer there. Now, slope can also be looked at as it's the rate of change of our graphs. Now, that can also extend out to other equations as well, and not just graphs, but we can pick two points on a function and use the slope formula to find the rate of change. So, uh, what we're really doing is, if the function is not linear, we can find the average rate of change by picking two points and creating a secant line. So, that's what separates calculus, so those of you taking calculus next year, um, Calculus will be able to find the instant slope at any point on that curve, where what we're doing now is we're always finding the average slope. So between two points, whether it's here and here, here and here, here and over here, like we're finding that average slope. What that's called is a secant line. So it's a line connected between two points on a curve. So what we can use, though, to find average rate of change, it's the change in y over the change of x. So... We take our two x's and we subtract them on the bottom. We take each of those x's and put it into our function and the values we get we would subtract for our top. So it's like what we've been doing with slope only now you have to find the y's before you subtract them. So if we want to find the average rate of change of our function f of x equals x squared first we're going to deal with 0 and 1 as our two x's. So the bottom would be 1 minus 0. Get the tops, we would take the 1 and put it in there. So 1 squared 
would be 1 minus 0 squared would be 0. We get 1 over 1, which is 1. So again, to get those tops, it's 1 squared minus 0 squared, which is 1 minus 0. Here. Now our bottoms would be 2 minus 1. So the 2x is subtracted to get the top. So 2 squared would be 4. 1 squared we know is 1. 4 minus 1 is 3. 2 minus 1 is 1. So we get 3 then as our slope. This one here. 0 minus a negative 2. But on top, 0 squared is 0. Minus negative 2 squared, which is 4. We would get negative 4 over 2, which is a negative 2. So, average rate of change. So we take those x's, put them into our function. What we get out are the y's that we can subtract on top. We subtract the x's on the bottom, simplify it out. So, average velocity of an object is really the same thing, only we replaced y with an s and x with a t, so that s stands for position, t stands for time, so that it can fit a velocity equation. So, the function for a rolling ball down a ramp is 5t squared, so find the ball's average velocity. So, first they went from 3 to 2 seconds, so... The bottom would be 3 minus 2. The top here, 3 squared would be 9. 9, my, or 9 times 5 would be 45. Minus, if I put 2 in there, 2 squared would be 4. 4 times 5 would be 20. And I would end up with, well, 3 minus 2 would be 1 on the bottom. 45 minus 20 is 25. So in other words, 25, and I believe this is feet per second squared. No, just feet per second, feet per second, because we're velocity, as I think that is the label with these. I guess it didn't specify, so I'm going to assume that, otherwise it'd be meters per second. But if I do this one here, so 2.5 minus 2, well, 2.5... I'm going to put this in my calculator. So 5t squared. So if I do 2.5, I get 31.25 my answer. Well, I already did 2 seconds. I know that's 20. So... I get 0.5 on the bottom and up top I'd have 111.25. Sorry. So 11.525 divided by 0.5 would end up being 22.5. That would be feet per second. All right, so now we're starting to get pretty small somewhere right down here on the bottom. So change of S over change of T is what we're dealing with. So on top, we'll get to in a moment, but the bottom here, we have 2.01 minus 2. So the bottom would end up being 0 0.01. On top now, if I put 2.01 in there, I'm going to get... So... 2.01 squared times 5 would be 20.2005 minus, well, we already know what 2 is. 2 is 20. So we'd get 0 0.2005 on top. So 0 0.2005 divided by 0 0.01, which would really be like move the decimal over twice. And we would get 20.05. Again, that's well, it, we'll switch up a little meters per second this time since it didn't get into this one. But that's it. That's this equation. Now, yeah, I'll go for feet per second. That's this, uh, this lesson. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns. Um, you can pay me, email me, send me a message on Google Classroom. Remember, you can always pause if you need more time to write stuff down. 
Otherwise, you can always rewind if you need to hear something again. Please take advantage of that with this being a video. Otherwise, until next time, we'll talk to you later.